Well, I'm guessing you clicked this video because you want to learn D5 render. Sorry to disappoint you. What? What the f but yeah, the best place to learn D5 Render. So what is D5 Render? D5 Render is a real-time rendering software that offers top-notch animation and still renders. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to use D5 in tandem with Autodex Revit. So I'm going to start from linking the files. I'm going to be talking about camera shots. I'm going to be talking about composition environment. I'm going to be talking about the lighting. And I'm also going to be talking about the environmental effects for render. And I'm going to show you guys how to create animations using D5 Render. I'm also going to be leaving all the results source files for you to access the link will be in the description below so don't forget to subscribe to the channel hit the like button also hit the notification bell to get notified when we release new videos like this because we do this on a weekly basis so with this out of the way let's go into the subject matter at hand all right so as you can see we have our project here in revit and if you go over to this reveal element icon here you are going to see the fences which are also completely modeled so it's always important to know that you need to model completely in revit before going to d5 which will be best so i'm just going to turn off this reveal hidden element icon here then we're going to start exporting this so if you if you have installed d5 on your system and you have installed the d5 revit live sync to get this d5 Revit live sync you need to go to d5render.com it's there for you available for free what you need to do is to click download and install then this id5 icon will appear on your revit interface so now i'm just going to rotate this i'm going to make sure another thing to take note of is this 3d gizmo is always good you must locate this 3d gizmo at the center of this point here so i've dragged the 3d circle or the 3d sphere to this center point so this will be the um, the point of movement in d5 when it's always important to keep this then i'm just going to click on x so you can see my pivot point will now be located here so now this is done and out of the way we are going to be exporting this project so to do that we're going to click on this d5 render icon so now i can click on export by simply clicking start d5 if d5 is open but i usually prefer exporting it because exporting it used to remove possibility of issues in future once i export it even if i come back two months or three months later and i just export it to the same place i can always update it on d5 render so i prefer using the export icon so i'm just going to click on export you under this export tab you are going to see an interface is going to pop up in this interface you can now turn on these settings but i don't need any of these settings to be on i just need to increase this export smoothness so this export smoothness is directly proportional to the quality of the export so if you want your model like all the curves to be smooth without all these polygonal lines and but although the thing will be heavier if you export it higher you click on this so i usually recommend around 11 i think that is average then we're going to click and export then it's going to open our file explorer and we're going to locate exactly where we want to keep it okay so so once we've located where we want to keep it we can just create a new folder let me just call this d5 file a name all right so now i've um, written the name i'm just going to click on save and it's going to start exporting so we are going to be right back all right so now the export is done we are going to start exporting the fence so before we start exporting the fence we are going to temporarily hide all these other parts of the model so we are going to select everything here and we're just going to click on hh on our keyboard to temporarily hide it then we're going to go over here to this reveal hidden elements we're going to click on it then we're going to see the hidden element so we're going to start from this front fence we're going to select it right click on hide in view by elements then we're going to turn off this hide elements icon so now we are going to click on this 3d gizmo again and we're going to drag the center point to the middle of this fence now so we are going to click on x to close it but the gizmo settings will still apply is at the center of this fence now and is a good moving position in d5 so i'm going to click export again click on it then we're going to call the fence f1 and we're going to do the same for the remaining fences So now we are done exporting everything. I'm just going to click on HR to unhide it. So now we are going to jump right into D5. So if we are going to minimize this Revit now, and if we click on D5, we are going to see this interface will pop up. So in this interface, as you can see, my name and email is already logged in. So if you are not logged in, it will give you the option to log in. And if you haven't signed up, you can sign up and create a new account. Just use your email. Nothing there is not going to cost you anything. So we are going to just start by simply creating, clicking on new. So this new is going to create a new D5 file. Okay. 
so now as you can see it's going a beginner's guide is going to pop up but i don't need it i'm here to teach you so i'm just going to close this so now what we are going to do firstly is to click on ctrl s to just save it so we are going to save this project where we want to save it i usually recommend saving it close to the location where you exported the export files so we're going to look for it now in our own file explorer so now we're just going to name this luxury duplex then we're going to click on save all right so now we've done this we're now going to click to we are going to start importing the models so to import models in d5 let me just explain this d5 interface basically so this is the import let me just call this this is the import interface here where you have all the things relating to the importing model or bringing in models into the d5 scene then this is now where you control the models you have brought in into the d5 scenes it encompasses the environment the effect the inspection if i place any model an inspection tab will pop up here where you can edit parameters or reload it or update it so that is just basically what these two sites means so if you go to this place this is where your camera and your movements everything that concerns movement and visual display and here you can have some support components here so we're going to be exploring each of these tools as we walk through this project in d5 render so this video is very practical and is very easy for you to use it to learn d5 very well so we're just going to click on this import tab here so once we've clicked on it we're going to go to our location where we located it so so as you can see we're in that location now so i'm going to start from this main luxury duplex click on it then i'm just going to click open so it's important to know that d5 exports have a peculiar file type of their own which is dot d5a so it's actually peculiar to d5 render so once the thing is imported into the d5 scene you're going to see it under this imported tab you're going to see if i click on object i'm not seeing anything because object represents what we have placed in this scene but now if i click on imported i'm going to see the luxury duplex so i'm just going to click on this and it's going to takes a little bit of time depending on how powerful the system is this system is actually relatively powerful so it's going to come out fast okay so now as you can see it has entered the d5 scene so i'm just going to place it so now we've placed it i'm going to explain the interface of navigation in d5 render so you have basically three options of navigation and you can access those three options from this tab here you have the orbit you have the fly you have the walk so the orbit basically means if you right click like this you are going to select a pivot point so by selecting that pivot point you can now rotate from the pivot point and zoom in and zoom out by using the scroll key on your keyboard so zoom in zoom out with the scroll button on your keyboard then you right click to hold a point then move in an orbital manner then if you select this fly the fly is just you have freedom you can increase the speed of the fly and you have freedom to move like a ghost you can right click to change the direction of your view once you right click to this view let's lost view down you can scroll out with the scroll button on your keyboard to zoom out you can scroll in to zoom in so you just have freedom to move like a ghost so me i usually prefer using the free or the fly navigation tool so that of navigation out of the way we are going to be bringing in other parts of the model so i'm just going to click on import again and i'm going to bring in all the fences starting from f1 bringing the second fence f2 the third one f3 and the last one f4 so now these fences are out of the way you are now going to see we have finished the importing phase in d5 render so we're just going to place them one on one let's start from this f1 click on it and we are going to place it click on f2 and let's just place it randomly now i'm going to show you how to adjust the position properly f2 click on f3 click on f4 okay i think i okay this is f3 now so click on f3 and just place it all right so now we have placed these fences we have placed these buildings and we are using the free icon to navigate so now we are now going to talk about how to move objects in d5 render so if i click on this fence for instance you are going to see three lines these lines actually represent the three axes of movement which is the moving it on this axis moving it on this front and back axis and moving it on this up and down axis so once you control all these axis you can also move it in a 3d dynamical manner by selecting this box in the middle so this box is going to give you option to place it on a roof or place it down or place it on any plane so that is what gives you freedom to move around you can also rotate it using these curved lines you can rotate it on this axis you can rotate it on this axis as well and you can also rotate it on this axis as well so depending on what you want to do you can move it freely in any way so you can also move it on different planes like you can see this circle here you can move it on this horizontal vertical plane sorry you can also move it on this other plane you can move it on this horizontal plane as well then we're just going to select this central box here and bring it back to this plane wherever you are so now we want to actually adjust this fence but the issue with this fence is that we are not it will be difficult because we are not seeing where the boundary line of the site is so what we are going to 
to do is we are going to fast forward a bit into material application but why i'm fast forwarding into material application is because i use the different material for the main greenery within the site and a different material for the greenery outside the site so i'm just going to click on i on my keyboard that is the shortcut for material editor or you can go to this tab here and just click on it and the material editor will be open so once the material editor is open you are just going to select this outer outer site once i've selected it i'm just going to maybe change the color let me just change the color to red or something so now as you can see you can now see that the greenery within the site is separate from the greenery outside the site do not mind this material i'm going to change it let me just make it gray so let me just make it white go to this base color map click on this tab here and just make it lighter so it should just be separate and it won't look irritating to the eye like that red color i use so now we can clearly see it i had to fast forward to material a bit because this is very important for me to adjust these fences so let's go back in time again to this fence now so now we are going to start adjusting this fence to fit into this side very well so first of all we are going to be adjusting it on the horizontal axis so we want to access an orthographic view in this d5 so to access an orthographic view i'm just going to hit t on my keyboard so this is going to give us access to the top view so we are going to view everything from purely orthographic so now if we select this front fence we can now adjust it on our own easily without any force so i'm just going to drag it and drag it till it reach the actual point then i think the actual point is somewhere here then i think it's good then i'm going to select this fence as well click on it then i'm just going to drag it and drag it to somewhere here remember i told you this is purely orthographic so it will be easy to see all these small things you can't see when you are doing 3d we didn't place the f4 fence so i think this is not the right fence for this so i'm going to click on delete i'm going to go back to this important tab click on this f4 again then i'm just going to place it click on p then place the f4 then click on t again this orthographic view that is to exit back to get back to the perspective view so now i'm just going to place this f4 here then if i go under this object tab i'm going to see the f4 then i'm also going to click on this and i'm just going to drag this f3 fence to this point here so as you can see everything is just aligning perfectly so now we are going to hit p to access our 3d view back so now we have adjusted this on the horizontal axis we are going to be adjusting the height now so which is very simple i'm going to click on it then i'm just going to use this blue line for the vertical adjustment and drag this down somewhere here I think this is the height is meant to be i'm also going to do the same for this click on this drag it down a bit so there will not be spacing from this i'm also going to click on this and i'm just going to drag it down a bit as well all right so now this is out of the way i think we are done with the placement so we're going to enter the camera shots in d5 render so camera shots in d5 render is pretty simple to do as far as you have knowledge on the navigation tools you could select your camera and place it pretty easily another important aspect to note in your camera shot is this camera tab here so if you click on it you are going to see some options this option give you access to change your view angle so this view angle can help you especially if you are in tight positions you could just select your view angles and change it to whatever you want so me i usually start from 75 for exterior views so i'm just going to click on 75 then i'm just going to try and get because another thing is you need to understand some principles in picking camera shots in perspective views so i usually try and balance everything on each side so i try to make the distance between the, the building as a point of focus then the distance on all sides should be equal like the distance from the right side to the left side should be equal the distance from the bottom of the building to this environment should be equal with that of the sky so it's going to create a balanced perspective and i try to get a honest perspective Perspective. what i mean by honest is a perspective that don't need me to add some extra settings for it to look real so i'm just going to click on this navigation interface i'm going to slow down the speed so i can get this sensitive shot because all these shots you need some carefulness to actually get it very well so i usually like going low so another thing now you can also activate the two point perspective setting to assist you in getting nice views by just clicking on f8 on your keyboard so this f8 no matter how you take it up or you take it down is going to maintain a straight two point perspective that is going to give you exactly what you want so from this now you can see that i like this shot although i could just go to this camera view angle and change it let me check 70 out okay i actually like the 75 i chose before so it's going to give me a good chunk of environment as well as some skies and some other aspects 
so this is what i want because i want the viewers of this view to actually get the good side of the environment so once we have set our camera shot we are just going to go to this create new scene we can click on this one or click on this tab and just create a new scene so we have currently saved this scene so if you go out of this view let me just increase the speed it's always good to increase the speed once you move out of a set perspective and you click on p to exit the two point perspective settings because if i go back to this scene now it will automatically activate the two point perspective setting i i set before i save the scene so i'm just going to click on p to exit it so i can maintain other functions so when i'm ready to go back to that scene i'll just simply click on it and go back to that scene okay so now i think we're done with the camera shot we can just pick a few more i can pick some maybe let me pick an approach camera shot maybe here add scene so finally now i've done this i'm going to go back to this scene right now because i want to do something i'm now going to click on p on my keyboard to deactivate the two point perspective setting increase the speed of camera movement now i want to pick an aerial shot so aerial shots are important in presentation it shows the building the context of the modeling especially when you're modeling in big cities so aerial shots are really important so i'm just going to try and pick an aerial shot here one thing i usually do when i pick an aerial shot is go to this camera view angle i make the view angle from 50 around 50 to 60 or 45 to 60 whatever so once this view angle is closed like this i could get a lot a lot more scope from the building without getting a very distorted view so let's say i just select this here and i think i've gotten the entrance and i've gotten the building a lot so i'm just going to click on create new scene so you can see i've created four scenes i could just click on this navigation i can change this to orbit then right click and select this point then rotate this and pick a back view. Then I could select back this to fly so I'll get my versatility back and just select another aerial view from the back right corner. So you can see the whole pool area that is looking nice and this is just a good view to pick. Then I'm just going to click on create new scene. All right, so one other important aspect, at least once you've reached this stage and you have brought in everything and it's just, you have set up everything like this. So the next phase we're going to enter is applying materials. So before we go any further, we're just going to hit to save our control S to save our progress in D5 render. All right, so the next interface we're going to be jumping into is the material interface. So I'm going to be showing you how to apply materials in D5 render and I'm going to show you how to manipulate some materials and get realistic materials. So we are going to be starting from the building and we are going to be going to the site. Then we will go to some extra touches if we see need to. All right, so let's start from the materials. So in this material, we the way to apply, there are two ways to apply materials in D5 render. You can either apply materials by clicking on assets and accessing the material library, which D5 has a wide array of materials to select from depending on what you want to use them for or you could just click on the material editor library to select existing materials from the software you imported it in then you can just change the maps and give it to your own custom maps so i'm going to start from the basic which is clicking on this asset library and getting materials from there so now you can see these materials are grouped into different categories including the fabric the glass the wall tiles and all those stuff so let's just click on ceramic tiles because we want some nice ceramic tiles for our floor so i'm going to click on this jazz white tile so if you download d5 new most of these materials you are going to need to download them so sometimes it will take your data and you to take your time but me i've been using d5 for some time so i've downloaded these materials so i'm just going to click on this jazz white and i'm going to place it here so once i've placed it here is play just placing a material from d5 is not just enough you will need to edit it so once i uh, place it i'm going to click escape close this then i'm going to click on i on my keyboard or just click on this material editor click on it then this interface is going to open as i said earlier you are going to see this inspector interface then it's going to give us option to edit some parameters so firstly i'm just going to click on this tri planner i think the color is okay but if you want to change the color okay this is the base color map this is the map of the material so you can click on it to change it if you want but i don't want to change it if you want to change the color click on this base color and you are just going to click on it you can change it to white 
and we can even increase stuffs like the metallic nature which i don't want it too metallic we could increase the specularness i don't want it too specular so i don't i'll just leave it back at where it is and i did other things okay so now we are done with the floors we are now going to jump to the walls so for the walls now there are different materials for the wall we could go to the asset library or we could just use the wall paint as it is which is not really too bad we can just adjust some things but let's just start from the asset library so we are going to go on that wall we are going to go to wall paint so there are usually two materials i, rec I recommend for your default wall you can use this white rough paint i used to use it before but honestly i don't like it but let's just click on it and place it then you are going to see the wall will come out with this texture which is actually realistic if you look at it from a point of view but i actually prefer it being just smooth okay for the sake of this video i'm just going to use this rough wall tutorial and see how it is even though it's been a while since i used it but let's just look at how it goes so i'm going to click on i on my keyboard i'm just going to select this then i'm going to start editing this wall paint so as you can see it's giving off one kind of dirty wall vibe so we are going to try and make the wall clean by changing the color if this color doesn't work you can go to this base color map you can click on this icon here then you can now increase this material color here so after that you go back to this base color you go to the settings turn on this tri planner settings then what we are going to do now is we are going to go down again click on this round corner settings what this round corner does is that it bevels the edges because in real life you cannot see perfectly sharp edges so you cannot control the radius of that beveled edge and just make it look good. so now i don't want this paint color to be pure white so i'm just going to go back to this base color and i'm going to change it somewhere around milk cream so i'm just going to change this hue to somewhere around brown then i'm just going to drag this just a bit off this brown okay so i think we have gotten a desired color of what we want to get all right so now we have done this we could just simply select this we have this concrete facial here yeah, but i want this concrete facial to be the same color with the basic wall i just want there will be some differences so i'm just going to click on this i'm going to go over to this tab here once you scroll up you are going to see some tabs here so i'm just going to select this one which means duplicate so once i duplicate it i'm just going to copy this to the concrete facial i'm going to click on escape click on i again to edit this concrete facial as i told you i don't want it to be like the walls so i'm going to scroll down i'm going to turn off this tri planner and this round corner so i don't want it to be round like this one then i'm going to make it white as possible so i'm going to drag this to the whitest click on this base color map drag this to the whitest reduce this reduce the hue so it's going to be look as white as possible so now i think this is whiter than this we're now going to jump into the next aspect of materials which are glass so to edit glass you can see that if you have imported this as glass from revit it's going to pick some properties of that glass if i give you a base color you are going to see the glass color so we could just select the normal glass now and we could adjust the color like this one is looking too dark now so i'm just going to make it somewhere around gray i'm also going to edit some other parameters you can also select glass from this asset library too but i'm just showing you let me just complete the editing one then you can increase the specularness increase the refraction if you want reduce the refraction if you don't want it reduce the transparency if you don't want it i will suggest the transparency being high or you could just simply go here click on glass and then you are just going to select this normal glass to start with which is still good but we, we could just still edit it again then i'm going to click on i on my keyboard select this glass then i'm going to change the color towards gray then i'm just going to go over here and copy it throughout the other glass materials copy it here okay this is not glass so let me just copy it to where glasses are glass materials are so now i'm done with that all right so now we are done with the glass okay let me just copy it to this railing glass then i could still select i and select this railing glass because i want it to be darker than the other glass i could just drag the tint down towards the more darker color uh the roughness zero select the older ones the roughness to zero just to make sure zero and i think other things are pretty good select these other ones increase the specularness to about 0 0.4 5 to be more reflective the same thing with this one 0 0.5 i think around that i like this glass 0 0.5 all right so now as you can see we have applied the glass materials so the next material we're going to be working on are the metallic materials so the metallic materials you can still edit it from the two ways and you can still edit it from them the normal asset library so we're just going to use this normal editing it from the manual editing so we're just going to select this dark material as you can see it's already looking kind of metallic but it's not there yet so what you are simply going to do is first of all we're going to make this base color a bit lighter in gray color so you can see the metallic 
lost that is coming out we're going to reduce this roughness because this roughness kind of works against metallic colors so as you can see it's looking more metallic now we're going to go down and on this round corner setting so this round corner bevels the edges and make it look more realistic then once i think this metal is good for our munions i'm just going to select copy and i'm going to copy it to this inner munions and i think it's going to apply for everything in the project so it's always good to note that once you are working in any software d5 recognizes materials based on the way you name them and apply them so it's always good to keep that in mind while applying materials in d5 so we're also going to work some some other metals like this metal panels i placed here is actually looking good but it will it needs to look better because of the metallic material there so i'm going to click on i you could also go over to this asset library and select your metallic materials you can select it you can pick on this mirror metal you can still place it so if you've picked on this mirror metal it's just to click on it and edit it that's what you need to do so for instance i'm going to increase the roughness now and i'm going to okay the color is already white i'm going to reduce the metallic nature so i think this color is already good this way then i could just select this material copy it to this darker one click on i then change the color of the hue color of this darker one to somewhere blue let me change it to dark blue so as you can see now let me just make it lighter blue so as you can see you can see how the material the metallic panel material is looking good so now i think we are done with metals for now yes i think we are done with metal so the next aspect of materials i'm going to be talking about is the masonry stones you can see the masonry stones are obviously in front of us and we're going to apply some materials on them so by masonry stones the best place i'll suggest to find masonry stones is under world house so under this world house you are going to see a lot of bricks a lot of stones but what i usually like is this particular brick here so i like using this mixed colored gray or you could also use this one as well this gray wall brick this concave gray convex brick is also nice uh, i am even considering using it but let's start with this one i know very well i select it and place it so as you can see you can see how this material is looking very nice okay so i'm going to click on escape and i'm going to edit it before i copy it to other parts so i'm going to click on i on my keyboard then i'm just going to click on this to edit it so now i'm just going to first of all change this from displacement to custom okay let me just change it back to displacement because i feel displacement the material template okay i forgot to talk about this so in material editing there's always one thing to consider this material templates so this material templates give you option to change it to different material templates and you need to change it to the one that suits what you're applying for most so i think displacement suits me well for this masonry house so i could use displacement and work well so i'm going to, going to check on this round corner here i think the round corner i could reduce it to the barest minimum i'm now going to edit the scale of the texture so to edit the scale of this texture it just controls how big and small this texture is going to be by increasing the value i'm going to reduce the scale but if i reduce the value i'm not going to increase the scale so if i zoom out i think this is too big let me go back to this camera and just change the view and go back to 90 so my movement will not be feeling weird so i think this is too big i'm just going to increase it a bit to about 0 0.7 so i think this 0 0.7 is enough if i go back to this base color i'm just going to make it a bit lighter so the colors will come out very well okay so i think this is fine and good then i'm just going to select this and i'm just going to click on copy and i'm also going to copy it to other places i need it so i feel that based on the color scheme i'm using this masonry stone is too dark so i'm considering changing it okay to change it now i'm going to select a brick material so i'm going to look for a much brighter and better brick material to use so i think from all the free ones made available i'm going to use this red solid brick let me just click on it and see how it goes so i think this red solid brick actually does the trick so i'm going to click on i to edit it the same way i'm just going to repeat the effect i did turn on this round corner reduce it as much as possible then reduce the value to increase the scale then i think um, this is appropriate then click on this then i'm just going to copy it here and just unify all the materials i'm also going to copy it to this one here okay so talking of metals again i'm just going to select this monium metallic material click on i again select this monium metallic material i'm going to copy it to this railings here and i'm also going to copy it here and copy it to all these other railings so you can see i can make multiple copies so let me just try and duplicate these materials as much as possible so we're going to move fast 
okay so now i'm just going to click on escape again and i'm going to select this masonry bricks click on i select it then i'm going to copy it and i'm just going to paste it on this fence this fence bricks all right so as you can see so far we are making some progress in the material application so the next after this masonry stones i'm going to apply some more masonry stones like for instance look at this pool we need some nice masonry stones here to actually give this the effect we need so i don't think we can see that under water so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to outdoor ground so under this outdoor ground i'm going to going to scroll down and look for a kind of pavement i like using for this kind of outdoor flower pots or flower beds so I'm just going to click on this pavement tile, click on it. Then I'm going to click on I, click on this. Then I'm just going to change this from displacement to custom. So once I change it to custom, I think custom works best for this particular one. Then I'm just going to turn on this triplanar setting. I'm going to turn on this round corner setting and I'm going to increase the radius for this time around. Then I'm now going to reduce the value to increase the scale. So I think this is sufficient. So as you can see, you can see how this looks and I think it actually looks good so i'm actually going to change it back change the material template back to displacement i think let me just look at how it goes so i think displacement serves this better yes i think displacement serves this better so now we are done with this i think we are done with the masonry stones we are now going to go into the next aspect of materials which are these wood grains or these wooden materials so we need wooden materials for a lot of things we need it for our panels we need it for our doors and we need it for facade treatment okay so firstly to access the main category of wooden materials we are going to go under grain because wooden materials need a map so to just edit it you need to download something before you can edit it and import your own custom maps which i'm going to still show you how to do so under these wooden grains we are just going to select a plain smooth wooden grain for these wooden panels here so i'm going to, going to click on this light brown maple then I'm just going to select this and place it here. So once I've placed it here, I could still edit the properties of this wood material. I could click on I, select the wooden material, click on I to select it. Then go turn on this triplanar setting. Once I turn on this triplanar setting, I could now control the value, maybe reduce the value to increase the scale. Then change the color, drag it towards the browner side. Let me drag this towards the browner side. Then just change it, drag the hue towards the browner side. Then I could increase other things like the metallicness just to increase the specularness, reduce the roughness if you want the thing. Then go over here and turn on this round corner if you still want the round corner to be highlighted, which I think is fine and good. I think the exit ent or entrance door should be metallic. So let me just go to metallic materials and I'm going to, going to look for a nice metallic material for this. So let me just use um, metallic tiled material. So I'm just going to select this one or let me go up. Okay, let me just select this one now and place it here. So now I've selected this metallic material, as you can see, it's giving us this checkered feeling. I'm going to click on I. I'm now going to reduce the metallic color. Then I'm going to click on this base color and I'm going to change it towards dark. Darker, so it's going to give us that nice door feel. So I'm going to reduce the roughness. Okay, increase the roughness as well. So it's reduce the specularness, so it's not going to look too much. Reduce the roughness. So I think this is just good so i'm going to go to this base color map change this and i'm going to make this lighter so the texture won't be too intense then i'm going to go back to base color i'm going to reduce the value to increase the scale okay then i think let me increase the roughness again i think this should do it i think this looks like a pretty nice door so now we are done with the wood we have i've showed you how to apply wooden grains and wooden materials to your wooden panels then we are going to go to the roofs so this metallic material i want to make it lighter because as you can see it's looking just gray i'm going to click on it to reduce the metallic nature just reduce it turn on this round corner settings as well then okay increase the metallic nature a bit then I think it's fine and good. All right, so now I'm going to show you how to apply materials on roof. To apply roofing materials, honestly, D5, most of their roofing materials are pro, but you can see some good free ones you can work with, which you are going to see under the category of roof materials. So once you click on roof, you are just going to click on, I want, I usually prefer using this black tile. So I'm just going to click on this. So once I click on it, I'm going to click on I to edit it. I'm just going to turn the darkness down a bit by making it lighter. Then I'm just going to select this copy to copy the material. Then I'm going to copy it to these rich caps. Okay. Then I'm going to click on I to edit the rich caps. Then I'm just going to make it 
a bit darker just to highlight it a bit all right so as you can see we have done a lot on the building so now i'm not going to show you how to illuminate lead light and illuminate lead materials so it's important to know that firstly let me just close this material library we are going to need to separate the materials in the modeling software i are using in the case of this video is revit i'm using so i separated this material and i called it an illuminous material it doesn't mean it will automatically illuminate in d5 but it's just separating the material name so i can change it myself when i enter d5 as i'm going to do now so i'm just going to select this bulb i'm going to scroll down under this interface i'm going to see this emissive tab and i'm going to check it on so now i'm going to increase this emissive to about 50 then i'm going to change this from color if you want to edit it by using color you can change it to any color you want you can change it to purple but i don't like using color i like using temperature so i'm just going to go on this kelvin scale increase it towards warmth then i think this is good for me so i could still select this bulb here i could now go over here and copy it and copy it to this led light so once i've gone to this led light now i actually want the led light to be warmer and not too shouty like the bulb okay let me hit ctrl z i think okay let me click on i again I think this is a glass material i actually put the led light in a glass so what i'm going to do now is now is when i'm going to click on this movement navigation interface reduce the speed to one so i could help shift to help me accelerate when i want to accelerate so once i click on this and copy it i'm now going to zoom in go slowly slowly and just move into the material so you can see this gold material this is where i want to apply the lead material then i'm just going to place it once I've placed it, I'm going to click on I and I'm just going to select it. Then I'm going to make it towards the warmer scale. Very, very warm. Then I'm now going to change the intensity to 35. Then once I've done that, I can now go back and increase the speed. Click on this glass and I'm going to change this glass color to white, to just pure white. So the LED light will come out very well. So as you can see, you can see the LED light. You can see how good it's looking. And you can see how illuminated is looking with the other light. Okay, let's just touch the ceiling. Okay, so we are just going to click on the ceiling, reduce the roughness, reduce the specularness, and change the base color to pure white. I think pure white will do the trick. So I think that is just all for the ceiling. It doesn't need to be too reflective or anything. So let me just copy this wall materials to the fences. Let me just click on copy. So it's going to look unified. we need to apply one very important material set in this project so let's just go back to the building again so i'm just going to click on i and i'm going to copy this wooden maple material and i'm going to copy it to these doors because this does need to be wooden so i think i could just click on this to edit the door handle and just make it chrome steel by reducing the roughness increasing the metallicness and the specularness and changing the color to white I think that does the trick so now i want to apply some nice tyrolean materials on this wall now so this wall material i'm just going to click on this and i'm going to click on copy and i'm going to copy it to this one but i'm not yet done yet i want to edit this to get some nice tyrolean effect so you can get some tyrolean effect by going to d5 asset library then you can go to walls under walls let's just go to walls you can go to wall paint so let's go to wall paint now so under this wall paint you can see some materials that looks like tyrolene finish and all but i don't usually like using this one because i want tyrolene to be like tyrolene i use in my local location so i'm going to click on escape i'm going to close this and i'm going to edit this by importing an outside map so i'm going to click on i to select this map now then i'm going to go to this base color map i'm just going to click on this one then i'm going to try and replace this then i'm just going to go to my document where i have a mini d5 library and i'm going to select this tyrolene bitmap image so i'm just going to click on ok so the tyrolene image is going to apply so now i'm going to delete these other images for the former material applied i'm going to delete all of them so once i'm done deleting all of them i'm now going to go back to this base color and i'm going to edit the material i'm going to drag this towards the blue spectrum and i'm going to make it darker darker like tyrolene then i'm going to make sure this i'm going to increase the radius of this then i'm just going to try and control the texture map so i'm going to increase the size increase the number to reduce the scale i think reducing the scale then i'm going to on this uv randomizer so this uv randomizer helps scatters it a lot and gives it this very realistic effect even though it's an ex external bitmap so you can see how the material material is looking i can reduce the scale back reduce the value to increase the scale a bit back so as you can see how it's looking it's looking very nice 
So I think finally I can now say that I'm, I'm done with applying materials inside the building. But I could still come back, who knows? All right, so now we are going to the site now. So for this site, we have some green areas, we have some proposed gravels, we have some uh, some curbs, and um, we have some paved areas. Okay, so let's start from these paved areas. So in paved areas, you simply need to go to assets. Under assets, you are going to go to outdoor ground. So under this outdoor ground, they are going to give they are going to give you a lot of options of paved areas. But there's one paved area I love in particular, which is this exterior paving 114. So I'm just going to click on it and place it. So this gives you one kind of reddish paved area, but I don't want it to be red. So I'm going to edit this material now before I copy it. Okay, so I'm going to click on close and I'm going to click on escape. I'm going to click on I on my keyboard. So once I select this I on my keyboard, it's going to bring out the material editor. Then I'm, once I click on this and click on the material I want to edit, we're going to start editing it. So now I'm going to go to this base color, click on it, and I'm going to drag it towards the lighter spectrum. Then after I've done that, I'm going to go to this base color map. I'm going to click on this icon here to bring out this dialogue. So I'm going to reduce the saturation. Just reduce it to about eight or nine. Uh, let me reduce it to five. Then I'm going to drag this hue or this rather saturation too. I'm going to drag it down to almost the barest minimum. So it's going to appear whitish gray. So let me just make it light. So I'm going to go back to this base color map and make it white as well. Go back to this base color and just drag this to about eight. So I think it should be enough. Then I can now go here and adjust the scale, reduce the value to increase the scale. Let me just reduce it to about 0.3. I think this is enough. Then once I'm done with this, I'm just going to click on duplicate and I'm going to copy it to this second material paving. Then I'm going to click on I on my keyboard to edit this. Then I'm simply going to go to this dialog again and I'm going to reduce the search, give it back the saturation it had just a bit. So it won't be looking off. So it will still give me that separation pattern I want. So now I'm done with this paving. I'm now going to go into these concrete caps. So this cap is kind of unique because it's kind of modeled individually to just fit in this curvilinear concept. Okay, so now I'm just going to go to assets. Under this asset, I'm going to go under concrete. So I'm going to be using some concrete materials for this. So for these caps, I want to use some brownish concrete. So let me just try and use this beige concrete and select it and place it. So now I've placed it i could click on i on my keyboard select it then i have to just go and turn on this round corner settings which i think is very important increase it a bit and i think we are done with that so now we are going to need some we are also going to reduce the specularness of the rough concrete because i don't want it to be specular on the cap so i think i've done that so now i could leave this material i could just select it and just basically make it darker i think then turn on this round corner settings then I think this green area separator is good enough. All right, so now we are going to apply concrete on this building footprint because it's actually meant to just represent a building that is not yet designed. So I'm just going to use this lightweight concrete and I'm going to place it here. So once I've placed it there, okay, I don't like it. The texture is too deep. So I'm going to look for something a bit flatter. So I'm going to use this rough concrete 09 and I'm just going to place it there. So I'm going to click on I on my keyboard, click on it. Then I'm just going to advance, reduce the this value to increase the scale. So I think this is good enough and I'm going to turn on the round corner setting. So now we want to edit this, this gravel. So I'm going to look for some gravel material and I think where I can find it best is in this natural raw material. So under this natural raw material, you are going to see a lot of stone options. So I think I'm going to download the one that looks very close i don't usually like all this kind of accumulated gravel because it looks unrealistic when you place it but let me just try and show you what, how it looks so i'm just going to place this here so you can see it's just looking very weird so even if i click on i on my keyboard and i just reduce this value now increase this value and it just looks kind of off for me so i usually prefer something that has more depth like for instance um, let me use let me scroll down and just use this um, sand graph or let me use these small stones you know and i'm just going to place these small stones so as you can see these small stones have a lot looks a look a lot more realistic than the other gravel image so i'm just going to click on escape i'm going to click on i and i'm just going to edit this so i'm also going to turn on the round corner setting i'm now going to go to this base color map and change it to white i'm going to go to this base color map here click on this icon this dialog will appear and just drag it towards the okay now i'm going to drag this back and i'm just going to reduce the saturation here so it's going to just look 
as white as I can get it so it won't be looking too off. So as you can see now, we have created a nice gravel material and we have done some nice work on this project overall. So I'm just going to copy the concrete material I used over there on this building footprint. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to place it here. I'm also going to place it here as well. And I'm also going to look for any other place that needs this concrete material. Okay, before we go to this pool area, we are going to still apply some other materials. Okay, I think we are going to go to the pool area because I want to make the green area the final material I'm going to be applying. Now, let's go to this pool area. And now we are going to start working on the materials in this pool area. So we have the water, we have the pool towels, and we have some other extra towels. I want gravel to be in between this spacing on this pool. So I could just go and copy gravel from that material i applied earlier i think this gravel here is okay so i'm going to click on i on my keyboard click on this then i'm just going to copy this so once i copy this i'm just going to place this here and you're going to see the gravels come out so now i'm now going to go to this wall tiles sorry i'm going to go to this ceramic tiles then i'm going to be looking for some nice taventan tiles for this um pool area so i could even go to search and just search for taventa so once i click on it okay it apparently let me just click on tar. Okay, so I don't think D5 has the Taventan tiles I'm looking for. So I'm going to close this and I'm going to try to work with what D5 has. So I'm going to go under this ceramic tile and I'm going to just try and look for a tile that could serve. So I think this terracotta tile will do the trick. Then once this is done, I'm just going to click on it and I'm going to go place it here. So now I'm now going to edit the nature of this tile. So I'm going to click on I on my keyboard, select this terracotta tile. Then I'm just going to go to this UV randomizer to actually randomize the terracotta tile. Then I'm now going to increase the roughness by imagine reduce the metallic to zero, reduce the specular. Then I'm going to go over here and turn on this round corner. So this round corner will just bevel the edges and make it look nice. So I'm also going to change the overall color of this. I'm going to go to this base color and I'm going to drag it towards the beige color. So I'm just going to drag it towards this white somewhere here. Once I've done that, I'm going to go to this base color map. I'm going to click on this and just make it a bit lighter and make it a bit this way. Then go back to this base color and just make it beige a bit okay so now this is done we are going to apply some more towels here so i'm just going to ceramic towels i'm going to look for this blue mosaic towel so i'm going to click on it and i'm going to make sure i go beneath the pool so i will not change the material of the water and click on this to change this to the mosaic towels so as you can see the mosaic tile is already looking very good so now we can still apply some look for some other nice tiles to just apply to these surrounding tiles on the pool so i'm just going to use this beige marble proclaim tiles and i'm going to place it on these rims of this pool so i'm going to click on i to edit it click on it then i'm going to just increase the um, roughness i'm going to turn on this triplanar settings then i'm just going to turn on this round corner settings and i'm going to reduce the increase the roughness and reduce the specularness so now this is done i'm just going to place a white simple tile on this flower pot in the pool area so once i do that let me just look for a nice wild tiles so okay i think this black and white hexagonal tiles will do the trick so i'm just going to click on it and i'm going to place it here so once i've placed it here i'm going to click on i on my keyboard i'm going to click on this to edit it then i'm going to as well turn on the tri um, triplanar setting then i'm going to turn on this round corner setting so it's going to give this a very nice effect so although this looks too plush, i don't really like this it's looking kind of plush. i'm just going to change this to this blue mosaic tiles and i'm going to going to click on it so i think this fits into the character more then i'm going to click on i on my keyboard click on this i think i think this is already set i'm going to now apply the water material so to apply water material in d5 render is very simple you're going to go to your asset library you are going to go to this water category and you are going to just start from this calm dark green water so you are going to, going to click on it and you're going to select it and place it so of course we don't want a calm dark green water in our pool so we're going to edit this water and we're going to see how much we can change it so i'm going to click on escape i'm going to click on the eye icon on my keyboard once i select this now i'm going to start editing it firstly i'm going to click on this color and i'm going to change it towards blue because i want this to be blue instead of um, looking green like a dirty pool so once I've changed this, this normal, I'm just going to leave it at the way it is. I'm going to reduce the specularness. I'm going to reduce the refraction because I don't want it to be refractive. I'm going to increase the flow velocity just a bit. I'm going to reduce the depth. Then I'm now going to reduce the value of this or increase the value of this to reduce the scale. Now I think 
we are done with the material application. So we are done with every other material apart from the grass. I left the grass for last because it's usually one of the heaviest material to apply in D5 render. So to apply grass in D5 render, there are two ways. You could just select this grass. Once you select the grass, you are going to change this from custom material and you're just going to change it to grass and it's going to generate some 3D grass for you, which is, I mean, it's all right. It's not bad, like it's, it's okay. But I want a realistic grass and for a realistic grass, there's another way for it. So I'm going to go to this asset library. Under this asset library, I'm going to go to natural raw materials, okay? So once I've clicked on this natural raw materials, I'm going to be looking for a particular material. So the material I'm going to be selecting is raw material, this dry deciduous woodland. So I'm just going to click on it and I'm going to place it. So once I've placed it, I'm going to click escape, close this. I'm going to click on I on my keyboard. So once I click on I now, I'm just going to go over here and um, just click on this displacement, change this to custom and I'm going to click on this uv randomizer so once i've clicked on this uv randomizer i have a nice base for my green area with and for the green area soil then i'm just going to click on the material and i'm just going to click on copy and paste it in this other flower pot and i'm going to also place it here as well okay so now i've done this i've, re I've pretty much set the thing for the green area so we're not going to start placing the grass so instead of applying a material that gives us the grass automatically we're not going to be going to asset we're going to be going to the models now so under these models, we are now going to see different kind of models, but let's go to what we want to do first. I'm going to go to this nature, under this nature icon, I'm now going to go under this ornamental grass. This ornamental grass is the category where we have our grasses and shrubs, so we're going to be picking from there. So I'm just going to go over here and click on this brush tool. So this brush tool used to give us the ability to brush green area over a large span of area. We can increase the radius of the brush depending on what you want. But for the case of this greenery, I'm going to maximize it. So once I maximize it, it's going to go like a material once I select the grass I want. So I'm going to pick this normal grass now. So for this normal grass, I'm going to increase the density to about 80% of this bar I'm currently controlling. You can see it, me controlling it. Then I'm going to reduce the size to about, let's say, very small. Then I'm going to increase this random size to about the same space. Then I'm just going to apply the material, the green. I'm also going to do it for this. And I'm also going to do this for this okay so now i've done this this grass is looking good but we still want more green here okay so now i'm just going to uncheck this i'm not going to select this green area then i'm going to reduce the density as well then i'm just going to try and apply it and i'm going to do the same for these other flower pots so note that the more dense your green area is, the heavier it is on your system and the more it tacks it. So be wary of this. So now that I've done this, I'm now going to apply some other greeneries. But these greeneries I'm going to apply, I just want them to sprite on occasional spots. I don't want it to be all over. So I'm going to uncheck this and I'm going to click on this particular one, for instance, because I love this one of my favorites. But I don't use it a much, so I'm going to reduce the density to almost zero. Then I'm just going to place it. So you are going to see the green area, will, the grasses, these, these weeds will sprout up occasionally. I'm going to do the same here. And I'm going to go and do the same here. So wow, if I click on escape, you are going to see that we have done a lot in this material application. So now we are now going to go here and we're just going to copy some paved area to here and we're going to apply some asphalt material to just seal the deal. So now we are just going to copy this paved area to this walkways outside. I'm going to click on I on my keyboard, copy this paved area, click on copy and just paste it here. Okay. Then I'm now going to paste the clay, create the asphalt material. So to create asphalt material in D5, you can just go to the material library. Under this material library, you are going to see a category named under this outdoor flooring. I think it's under outdoor flooring. You are going to see asphalt. So you have two major asphalts. You can use this one. I usually prefer this asphalt too. So if I click on it, you are going to see this asphalt material, which we can edit. But this is not bad. It's looking good. But I feel there's one I, will, I can bring that will be much better. Okay. And another thing is all the files I'll be using for this project, I'm going to be dropping all the resource files. The link will be in the description below. So don't forget to check it out. It should just be for a small token. You can use it to just support the channel 
well so now we want to edit this asphalt so let me just show you to edit this asphalt in case if this is the asphalt material i want to use so i'm just going to click on i to access my material editor i'm going to select this then i'm going to change this base color i'm going to make it lighter as much as asphalt is dark i don't want it to be too dark in my scenes so now i could just go over here turn on this tri planner setting um reduce the value of this number to increase the scale so I think this is a good D5 asphalt. So now we want to change these bitmaps and import our own bitmaps. So I'm just going to go for here. So this now for people that want to use the bitmap or maybe they can get the resource file, I'm going to drop for them. So I'm just going to click on this base color map. I'm just going to click on this bitmap and I'm going to be putting my own asphalt. So I'm going to be putting this asphalt material. I got it from freepblmaterials.com so you can get some nice free PBR materials from the website. So you can check it out. I think I'm going to drop the link to the of that too in the description below so i'm just going to click on this and i'm going to click on open i'm going to click on this normal and i'm going to also replace it with this normal pebble asphalt and i'm just going to re replace everything i'm going to right click on this one i'm going to delete it click on the roughness and i'm going to replace it with this pebbled height then i'm also going to go to this ao click on this pebble light and replace it with this ao bitmap film so now i'm just going to reduce the specular nature then i'm now going to just go and on this 3d uv randomizer so it will just randomize the asphalt material for me then i'm just going to go and control the grain size by increasing the grain this value or reducing it to increase the scale so i think this is a much more realistic asphalt so now we want to apply materials for this background of this site of course to which is simple just go to asset just go to your material library natural raw materials there's a particular material bitmap i love using for this which is this grass gravel i'm just going to select it once i select it i'm going to click on i on my keyboard to edit it then i'm going to go over this advanced click on this advanced tab here i think this is the way to drop it down okay so let me just see if i can okay so what i'm going to do i'm just going to change this to custom once i change it to custom i'm going to turn on this tri planner setting so once i turn on this tri planner i'm also going to turn on this 3d randomizer then i'm going to reduce this reduce this value to increase the scale as much as possible so let me just increase the scale to about this then i'm now going to change the scale color go to this base color map and just make the turn kind of dimmer towards the yellowish brown or yellowish green spectrum then just make it a bit darker so i think so i think this background material is very nice so it kind of removes focus so as you can see this my green area looks brown from far but if i zoom in you are going to see the greenery applying very nice so let's just go back to some of our views close this and go back to some of our views to see the materials we have applied so you can see the materials you can see the grass everything is looking nice so now we are done with materials we are now going to jump into composition of our views in d5 render which is kind of the main stuff but every stage in rendering is important all right so now we are going to start with the composition of this render scene so the first thing we are going to be working on are the background buildings so of course you can get background buildings from revit you can get it from previous d5 files you can also get it from you can get it from 3dx mass you can go and download some 3ds mass components so i've already gotten one i usually use for my project so i'm going to be loading it in so another thing you can do in d5 render is you can save projects to the, your local library for instance if i click on this fence now and i want to save it to my local library or well, i'm just going to hover around it under this object tab then i'm going to right click and i'm going to click on add to local so once i've clicked on it if i go to this asset library and i change this from online Line to local i'm going to see if i go click on that model i'm not going to see the new model so you can see this ft if i click on it you can see it's going to be able to load again so if i open a new project it's going to be able to load so that is the same way i saved this background buildings i'm going to use now so i'm going to click on escape then i'm going to look for the background buildings i want to use to load it into this project all right so once we've located the building we can just place one here I think I'm going to place this one here. Then I'm just going to rotate it here. Then I'm going to look for another one to place. So I think I could just place this one here. So I'm just going to click on this. So these are projects I've saved in D5 before. Then I could just click on it and I could just place one here. So apparently, it seems this one is too heavy. So I think it's unnecessarily going to lack this project. So I'm just going to click on Escape. Then I'm going to go back to the first option and I'm just going to select a much lighter one to 
use for this project okay so i'm just going to select this one and i'm going to just place it here okay so now i'm done selecting these background buildings i'm just going to work on them a bit then i'm going to start putting the lighting in them and i'm going to enter lighting so let me just close this now so firstly i'm just going to click on i on my keyboard and i'm going to click on this to edit this glass because this glass is too tinted then i'm going to change the tint from black to transparent because i need it to be transparent then maybe i can increase the specular which is good then i'm just going to click on copy and i'm going to copy the glass to this other glass so now i've done this i could just click on this building and place them more appropriately to suit the view better i could go back to this view and you should always go to take cognizance of the fact that you shouldn't make background buildings take too much attention of the scene so i'm just going to put them in a distance i could click on this one then just move it by a distance a bit and bring it back here so i think by this distance it's good now so i'm going to click on p to exit from this two point perspective restrictive setting then i'm going to enter the lighting aspect of d5 so one the first thing to do when you want to start lighting putting artificial light in d5 is to create a layer for the lights so you can off and on them when you want to so i'm just going to click on this plus icon here under this layer then i'm going to right click and rename this layer as light so now i've created this light layer we are going to start placing some light in the interiors of these background buildings so before we now start placing in the main buildings so i'm going to show, explain the principle of placing light in interiors in d5 render especially light you want to be popping out in exterior scenes like you if you do an evening view you are going to place good lights that are going to be popping out so this is how to do it you could select click on this light you could select point light or you could select rectangular light but i prefer rectangular light because you don't need to place a lot so if i just click on this rectangular light and place it here the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to click on this default layer and change it to light under this lighting layer so once i've changed it click on it change it to lighting layer so once i've changed it to lighting layer i'm going to click on this size and change this seismo here to actually lock the two axes so i'm now going to change this to three meter so once I've changed this to three meter, you are going to see is because of I locked this gizmo here, these two dimensions are going to change simultaneously. So now I'm just going to make the temperature as warm as possible because I want warm light. Then I'm going to increase the intensity to let's say 50. Then I'm just going to increase the attenuation radius and max the attenuation radius up. So as you can see now, now I've increased these settings. And if I just bring it down a bit, you are going to see how illuminated this scene is going to be. So if I just click on this and just shift this and hold shift key on my keyboard, then click on one of these axis lines and drag the light. You are going to see it's going to copy the light. So I'm just going to do the same to illuminate this space. I'm going to copy it and you're going to see all of them are still going to remain under this light layer. So I'm just going to copy this here, copy this here and copy this. So now I've copied the, all of this. I'm just going to copy maybe one or two more out. Let me just copy this one up here. Hold shift, copy it up. Then I'm just going to move it and adjust it to this interior position. Then hold copy and copy this to there. So once I've copied all of this, I'm just going to copy one out. So once I've copied one out, I'm just going to hold control on key on my keyboard. Then I'm going to select all of them, all the lights in this building. Once I select all the lights in this building, I'm now going to hold control and select the background building model itself. Let me do it again. Now I've selected the background building model. I'm going to hold control and select all the lights in the building. Then once I've done this, I'm going to go under these object tabs. I'm just going to right click and I'm going to click on group. So even despite the fact that I've grouped them together, as you can see, I can move them as a single unit without any issue. That is the good thing about D5. If I just turn off, go over this light layer and I just click on this eye icon to off the layer, you're going to see the lights are going to hide. So that is the advantage of putting lights on the layer. So we're going to be doing the same thing for this other background building before finally putting lights inside the main building, which I think is the most important. Then I'm just going to hold control and select the day background building model. Then I'm going to right click and I'm going to group it. So now I can now move this freely. So now this is done. We're now going to go and start placing lights within the main building. So we're going to drag this same light, which is under lighting layer. And we're just going to start placing it space by face. So it's going to illuminate everything inside within the building. So now let's adjust this to this point. Let's go inside the building and let's just place lights within the building space.
so i'm just going to place this one here i'm going to drag it down and i'm going to place it somewhere here so once i've done this i could even go outside the building i can i could just start adjusting it from here so i'm going to hold shift and i'm going to copy it here i'm going to also hold shift key i'm going to copy this to this center point So now we want to place one more thing to complement these lines, which are curtains. Because if you just place lights without curtains, it won't give you that realistic touch you are looking for. So we are going to be placing curtains in all these major openings of these spaces, so it's going to look realistic. So D5 have its own curtains. To access D5 curtain, you could go to Assets, go to Online again, go to Model, and under this model, you could just search on this asset for curtains. So once you click curtains, you click OK. OK, you could just click on search again and just change this instead of cutting just click cutting so it's not going to misinterpret the spell so you can see d5 cuttings you can see how realistic it is but the funny thing is i don't like d5 cuttings so i'm just going to click escape i'm going to make sure i click x here then i'm going to go to local and i'm going to bring in my own cutting i use for the my render project so i'm just going to click on this cutting i usually use and place it so this cutting once i'm using cutting i want to get a very translucent color so i'm just going to click on eye on my keyboard i'm going to select this and i'm going to click on copy and i'm just going to copy this translucent material all around for this cutting so now i have it i'm just going to click on it and i'm going to rotate it to this point i could also go to asset library i could go to online and i could look for some materials on that fabric that is actually translucent if i go on that fabric i could see some cotton fabric material so i could use this um gray gaze cotton or i think there's even a white gaze cotton so you can use this white gaze cotton and you can just place this somewhere here so you can see it's looking good so if i click on escape and i click on i you can see the white gaze cutting you can just click on it and copy it and copy it and copy the whole fabric which is still looking nice and all the same so i'm going to click on x then i'm going to just be copying this cutting this cutting will be in default layer not lighting layer because even in the daytime you still need the curtains so i'm just going to click on these curtains and i'm going to be copying it to all the spaces that openings are so it's just going to complement it but light is still going to pass through it so i'm going to hold shift rotate this here then i'm going to just adjust this well then I'm just going to be copying these curtains all around. So I'm going to click on hold shift, copy this even from outside. If you are skilled in navigation, you can even copy stuff from outside the, the building. So I'm going to hold shift down and I'm just going to copy this one here. So now I'm going to go to this double volume. So this double volume obviously has longer cutting walls. So what I'm just simply going to do is I'm just going to copy one of these cuttings and I'm going to edit the parameters of this cutting to suit it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this out a bit. Then I'm just going to go over here. I'm going to uncheck distance so it's not going to restrain the, the dimension or the dimension values together. Then I'm going to change this height to 7.2 okay not 72,000 let me just change it to 7.2 not 72 then i'm just going to drag it down and this is going to form a long curtain for this living area then i'm going to hold shift and copy the second one here as well i'm just going to make sure my own part that is close to the window i think is close to it let me just make sure then i could now use the normal curtain size for the other window spaces So I think so far we have placed curtains in, I think all the necessary spaces we need to place them in. So now the next aspect we are going to be working on are the bullard lights. So bullard lights are important because we also want to light up the environment. So what I usually do is I bring in the bullard light, bring in a light, a light component, and I'm just going to fuse them together. So I've already done this for a local file. So I'm just going to go to assets, go to my local library. Then I'm just going to try and locate it from where I previously did it. All right, so these are the bullard. This is the bullard light. I think I called it group one. So I'm just going to load it into this project. 
So what we are going to, as you can see, the bollard light came with its own light source, and this light source is from D5. I just grouped them together and saved it. So I'm also going to be giving, putting this in the package. I'm going to be dropping in the link will be in the description. So once I place this now, I'm just going to touch a little bit of things before copying it around. So I'm just going to adjust the height of this. Then, uh, so after I've adjusted the height of this, I'm going to go under this group and I'm going to expand the group. It doesn't mean I've exploded the group, but I'm just going to click on this point light here. Then I'm going to edit the temperature. I could control to the temperature parameter, reduce the intensity to let's say 35. So I don't want it to be too intense like that. Then I could increase the attenuation radius. Then and uh, most importantly, most importantly, I'm going to click on this default layer and change it to lighting layer. So once I copy it around and I decide to off it, if I click on it again and I just click on this minimize and I go to this lighting layer and off it, you are going to see the light will off too. So I'm just going to turn it on for visibility sake now. Then I'm going to be copying it around my project. So once it comes to border light, I always suggest you copy it from an orthographic view. So I'm now going to click on T to access the top view of this project. Then I'm going to be holding shift and I'm going to be copying this bollard light to positions where I think they will be needed on the site. All right, so now we are going to copy some bollard light in this sloped region of this site. So I'm going to click on P to access the normal perspective view. So now this site, why I want to access the normal perspective view is this side of the region of the site has some variations in the height of the landscape. So I'm going to hold shift and copy this. So I'm going to be editing them manually as I copy it. So I'm going to bring this one up a bit since it's on a higher level. So I'm going to hold shift to copy this and place it on this point here. I think on this corner will be sufficient. Then I'm going to hold shift to copy this here. I'm just going to adjust this. Let's say I'm going to bring it to this third level. So I'm just going to place it down and drag the height down here. Then I'm just going to drag this to somewhere here. So I think this is good. Then I'm going to hold shift again and I'm going to drag another one here. So now I'm going to place some polar light along this pool side. So it's guys going to make it um, serve well. So I'm going to hold shift, copy this here. I'm going to drag this down to this point here to match the pool. Then I'm just going to position one here. I'm going to hold shift, position another one here. Hold shift, position another one here. So I think we are done with placing this bollard light. So now we have placed the bollard light and I think we have done a lot on the lighting aspect of this project. We have pretty much done a good work. So we're just going to hit save to make sure we've saved our product. So the next aspect we're going to be working on are the broad greeneries. By broad greeneries, what I mean is the big trees, the, all the trees that will shade the whole environment that will just start building up the context. So I'm going to hit T on my keyboard so this t now is now to access the top view as usual then we're going to go to assets so i start building things like as if i'm designing a site plan so i'm going to start by placing some coniferous plants along the outside rims of the site mm -hmm. we are going to go under model under model we're going to go under nature under nature we're going to click on these conifers and we're going to be loading in some coniferous plants so it's one aspect you should take note of why choosing plants and d5 is any plant you see with this extra box icon at the top left corner, it means that these plants can animate if you enter the animation interface. So it's always good, although they are a bit heavier, it's always good to take cognizance of this because if you want a lighter project, you are going to you are most likely going to pick trees without the box that can't animate, that are not too heavy. But if you want a tree that can animate and you want to do some animations, you pick the ones with this box here. Yeah? So it indicates they can animate in animation like this one can't animate. So we're just going to click on this. Another thing to click on well, before you start placing plants manually is you're going to click on this brush tool. Brushing tool doesn't mean you want to brush it. You just watch and see what I'm going to do. I'm just going to increase the size a bit to about here, increase the random size. So even though I'm not using the brush tool, even if I off this, if I start placing this coniferous plant, it's going to have the effect of that setting I just did. That is this size here and this random size here. So just watch. So once I click on it now and I place the first one, you are going to see it's going to be placing with that parameter I set. You can see how random the size of the plants are. So now that I've done this, I could just place one or two more just around here. I could now click on these trees now and I could start reducing the size manually to about 4 meters or 4.6. So I could reduce this one as well, reduce it to 8 reduce this one to reduce it to six 
So now I think we've done some nice conifers. So now and after conifers, conifers are not just enough for the big plants. We're going to place some nice exotic palm. So we're going to go under this palm tree. Usually I prefer this palm or this palm. So for this video, I'm going to be using this palm here. Then I'm going to click on this size and I'm going to reduce the size, reduce the random size so it won't vary too much. Uh, let me just make them the same but reduce the size a bit. I don't want it to be big. Then I'm just going to turn this off and I'm just going to click on this palm and I'm going to start placing it. I'm going to place one here. I'm going to place just some palms along these ridges here. Just not too much, not too low. Place one here, place one here. Then I think I'm going to just, okay, I think that is enough. So now I've placed the palms. Now I'm now going to be placing some broadleaf plants. So I'm going to go to the under this broadleaf. These broadleaf are basically deciduous plants. So I'm going to be playing. This is one of my favorite plants in D5. I usually use it for umbrellas, like to kind of get an umbrella. So I could click on this and increase the size. Then I could just turn off this, then click on this three again. Now that setting is now there. Then once I click on it, I'm going to place one here. Okay, so now I'm just going to be placing some background trees. So I usually recommend trees that don't animate too much in background like this one. Okay, this one animates, but it's usually good in background. And I usually recommend you increase the size of background trees. So it's just going to serve as this. So I'm just going to be placing some background trees here and there. So I'm going to be placing some here. I'm also going to go back to palms and I'm going to be placing some palms along this road because palms along the road actually gives aids. So I'm going to be placing this palm, this palm. So I'm going to click on this, reduce the size again so the palm won't be too big. Click on the palm and start placing it. So after I'm done, I'm going to go back to this coniferous plant and I'm going to be placing some conifers in there in, along the road too. So let me just place maybe this one or let me look for a more porous one this one i think this one will serve then i'm going to place one here okay so now this is done um i think we're going to go back to the broad leaf and we're going to be placing some bigger broad leaves at the background so we're going to go down here and now we are going to now be selecting some trees we'll use to cast soft shadows in the site trees like this broad leaf plant we're going to click on this setting increase the size uncheck this then go back and click on this build the tree again then we're going to be placing this tree somewhere at the fairy ferals so this tree just helps us get soft shadows then okay so i think for now we are going to suspend the broad leaf plants let's just place a few more and check this and just select a few more just a few more here and there so you can just build a very thick background okay so now we've done this we're going to suspend broad greenery so we're not going to enter the detailed greenery i'm going to click on p to see what we've done so for this detailed greenery you're going to see that if i go back to this view now you're going to see how built up this environment is then manually you can now start modifying some of these three sizes like this one i'm going to modify it to four meters so once i've modified it to four meter i can now adjust the position of some of these ones I could just click on this one and just drag it and push it back to adjust the position i want in respect to this view so after i've done this i could now click on this palm i could decide to hide this one i could decide to click on this one and just move it a bit closer click on this building group and just move it towards this side then i could now decide that okay i'm not seeing the effect of that umbrella tree i placed. so i'm going to click on p here then i could just click on this and adjust this click on this screen adjust it to this point then go back to this view here then i could even click or go as far as reducing the size of this to about seven meters then going back to this view and seeing what we've done then i could still adjust click on p adjust the position of this tree just to give that nice umbrella effect at the top of this view so now this is perfect i think we have gone far with the broad leaf so we still need a lot of work to be done in the background with a lot more a lot more trees to fill up all these empty spaces but for now let's just we'll start working on the detailed green so now for the detailed green the detailed green talks about the shrubs the plants that will be around the masses 
the flower beds and all those stuff so those are the detailed grainy and for detailed grainy we're going to start with the ones that are going to be repeated along the peripherals of the site if the site was a typical site where we have straight lines I'm, i will have used hedges but this one is kind of a covilinear concept so i'm going to use something else so i'm going to hit t to access the top view again then i'm going to go to asset under asset i'm going to go to flowering help this flying help is where you can get some flowers you can just click on this one you can just click on this size parameter this brush parameter to in increase the size because we need these ones as big as they can get so you could just adjust this parameter to suit what we want so you can just click on one here and one here okay so now we have done this one i'm going to go to other helps these other helps have stuff like shrubs for instance our camera view is somewhere here we could just pick some other herbs like maybe you could place this here or place some shrubs here and there so we can now go to this flowering shrub this flowering shrub is where we have exotic auctions of repetitive plants we can use i usually like this one it's one of my favorites i'm just going to go to this brush parameter increase the size uncheck this again then click on this and start placing it repeatedly around the sides so i'm going to be placing one here placing one here placing one here placing one here 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 as well i'm also going to be placing some flowers here too so it's not like this the only thing i'm going to be placing so i'm going to go to this other region of the site i'm going to place one here I'm going to place one here then i'm going to place one here here one here here and um, maybe one here Maybe I'm going to place some along these fairy fells here. So now we've done this, especially on this flower bed. I want to place some more flowers along this flower bed. So I'm just going to be clicking options like this. I'm going to place this one here. I'm going to click on this. And I'm going to click on this size. And I'm going to reduce the size. Click on this out. Option out. Click on this. Then just place some of these flowers, nice flowers here. I'm going to click on this then i'm going to click on this size to reduce the size again click on this reduce the size then i'm just going to be placing this along some spots here okay so i think this is good so another thing now for this center point now i want to be doing something interesting so d5 actually has an option for grouped vegetation so if you go under this nature you go you are going to see a category called group vegetation so this is going to help you if you want to place like a flower bed combo so i usually like this flower bed combo two of some once i click on it it's going to take some time to load because it's a lot of flowers but it's actually worth it so I'm just going to click on it wait for it to load then we're going to place it so once the flower bed is loaded you can see how it's hanging you can just going to place it okay then we're going to click on p and we're going to see what i've done so we're going to go exit this view so now you can see the things we've done on this view so now let's just take a look at this flower bed so we can decide to ungroup it if you want you can decide to group it so another thing we're going to be placing here we're going to be placing some flowering plants here some just nice cool flowering plants here or we could place some hedges to just tone it up so i'm going to be placing some flowering plants on this lower edge and i'm going to be placing some hedges here so in d5 if you go to asset you could access some hedges so let's just say this is a hedge here but i usually like this hedge but this head isn't quite realistic to me. So I'm going to be bringing in a 3D Max model I brought in before, a vegetation model. So you can get some 3D Max files in 3dsky.com or 3dsky.org. So you can get some free 3ds Max materials you could use. But I'm now I'm just going to click on assets and I'm going to go to my own local library and I'm going to bring in some hedges so i'm going to bring in this 3dx mass hedge uh, so the disadvantage of 3ds mass vege vegetation is that they can't animate in d5 render but their realism makes up for that so once i place this here i'm going to close this i'm just going to rotate it and i'm going to just align it properly to this position here and i think it's looking good and detailed so let's just go further and add our shrubs and flowers here so we're going to go to online again but i'm going to go to other herbs or we're going to go to flying herbs so we're just going to see what flower we can add here so i'm just going to place this here i'm going to place this here as well and i'm going to maybe place this one just repetitively place one here then maybe scroll and place 
this one maybe okay this is a pro plant let me just place this one so you see you can see the pro d5 pro cost 360 dollars annually and 36 dollars monthly so if you can afford it it's actually a very good option for you just try d5 out it's a very wonderful software as you can see so i'm just going to be placing this here i'm going to place another one somewhere here and one maybe last one here so i think we've gotten we've nailed this flower bed in front which is looking good so let's go back to this first view and look at what we've done so now you can see that we've done a lot of environmental work so this particular greenery i'm just going to try and reduce the size i'm going to reduce it to one point or 2.1 meter so once i reduce it i'm going to get a better view of my building then i'm just going to go here and update this scene so now you can see we have done a lot of environmental build build up so one thing i'm just going to adjust this my view a bit by clicking on this fly navigation icon then i'm going to reduce the speed and just go down a bit because i'm actually a fan of environment so i want to just catch a bit more environment then i'm just going to update it and save it so once i've saved this i could now go here click on p then i could just click on this plant here since it's a background plant i could just drag it down then i'm going to go back to this scene and it's still going to give me that effect i wanted so i'm going to hit ctrl s i'm still going to be working on this detailed greeny so this detailed greeny also incurs stuff like foliage also incurs stones so we are going to add all those stuff to that scene so let's go to assets let's go to rocks so under these rocks now we are going to place some rocks just to add because in nature there is imperfection so that's why i believe as my personal philosophy so i like just adding a lot of extra stuff to just give it this realistic touch so i'm just going to click on this i'm going to click on this stone now once i've placed it i'm going to change the stone size to let me use um start from 600 okay 600 is too small let me go to one two so once this is one two i could just rotate this and just rotate it to an appropriate position so now so i've placed this now i could just add stuff like some other herbs these other herbs include this flowering shrub. I could just add it in between here. So these are just added to this scene. So in occasions, I could go to this flying herb, add stuffs like this shrub here. I could add it at occasions here. I could go over here, look at for things like this. Just maybe add it at occasions here, just to depict that imperfection that you want to get. So now after we have done this, we could now add some decals. These decals are like floor stains or floor maps. So we could get decals of road cracks. We could get off human footsteps. So we're just going to add some of those extra detailed greenery. So let's just add this here. And we're going to place this here as well. Then we're just going to rotate this to get and place this here. So we're going to hold shift and copy this to this point here so as usual now we are going to click p to exit this view so now we have done this we want to add some steps so this footsteps just gives this realistic touch so once we place this footstep i'm going to close this i'm going to click on escape click on this footstep now then i'm going to change this base color of the footstep to white so we are just going to rotate it this way then we're going to click on shift to just copy the footsteps so it will just look realistic so i think this is wonderful now so now we have we are done with this detailed greenery i think we have done it all. but my issue with this detailed green is that this place now is looking too green like there is no color there and once it's looking too green it's looking lifeless so what i'm going to do i'm just going to delete some of these shrubs here like one and two then i'm going to replace it with a colored greenery so i'm going to go to assets i'm going to go to nature under nature i'm going to go to ornamental grass or i'm going to go to flowering shrub so once i go to this flowering shrub i'm going to replace it with greenery like i'm going to try and use this one here i think uh, i'll try and use this and i'm going to place this here and place this here so this gives this color i'm looking for in this area so i think there's much more color there so now we are just going to so far so good unless i see something extra i need for this detailed greenery i'm going to add it so let's go back to this broad greenery and see how we can use some nice trees to fill up this region so i'm going to go to t again so this time i'm going to be adding some very big broad leaf trees so i'm going to go to asset I'm going to go to broadleaf under this broadleaf i'm just going to select one of my favorites that is this particular one then i'm going to click on this size and i'm going to increase the size to almost maximum or check it then i'm going to place them so i'm going to place one here and i'm going to place another one here 
So I think just three more is enough. Just we are now going to position them, go back to the view and position them appropriately. So I'm going to click on this one and I'm going to move it somewhere here. Once I move this, I'm going to click on this one. I'm going to move it somewhere here, move it back a bit, then just move it somewhere here. So now you can see how it's filling up this region. I'm going to change my camera view to this point, click on this big one behind this one, then I'm just going to move it to somewhere here. Then I'm going to click on this scene again. So we're going to see what we've done. So I could just drag this down here and just push this back. So once I click on this scene, we're going to see that this place is looking much fuller. So if I click on this one now and just push it backwards and just make it fill this background here, then I could maybe use another three here to click on this T. Then I'm just going to try and use another three to fill up this background. So this time I'm going to be picking this three here. I'm going to be holding shift. Then I'm going to increase the size to 20,000. Thousand. Let me add one more zero. So now it's big enough. I'm just going to place it here and I'm going to go back to this view. So now I'm just going to adjust this here and I'm going to see. So now you can see now, you can see how filled up this region is looking. And we have done a lot on the broad greenery. We have done a lot of the detailed greenery. So I think now we are entering the final aspect of composition, which is the entourage and some other things, just entourage and extras. So we're going to start off by placing our model car because nowadays in visualization, the car is the model of the visualization. So we're going to go to assets, so d5 actually has some nice vehicles so let's just look at the vehicles d5 have before we use the one we want to use so i'm just going to go over to this vertical category so most d5 vehicles are usually pro the very good ones although none of them still come with logo but look at some nice free ones you could use you could once you place the free one you could animate it you could do a lot of stuff with it depending on what you want to do once you click on it and you can even on the light on if you want which is all nice and good but i don't want to use this i want to use something much more realistic so i'm going to go under this asset and i'm going to go to local assets then i'm going to be bringing in my own s-class mercedes benz so i'm going to go to vehicles i've saved it in my local i've categorized it under vehicles in my local i've done a videos of how to save i've even showed it in this video how to save components to local in d5 render so you could check that out so i'm just going to click on this benz and i'm going to load it in so once i've loaded this in i'm just going to place it and i'm just going to rotate it to an appropriate view maybe somewhere here so once i've placed it here i'm just going to adjust the position i'm going to click on p to exit the two-point perspective set another thing i want to do is because of the plate number i want to bring in another car so i can copy the plate number from it so in that case i'm going to bring in this lexus so now i'll just place the lexus the lexus didn't import well but whatever so now i'm just going to click on i to click on this close this now i'm going to click on i select this material editor then i'm going to click copy and i'm going to paste it here just to copy the plate number then i don't need it and i'm going to go into delete it i just need one car in this view so now i've gotten this car i could now turn on this some settings depending on what i want for instance i want the light to illuminate then i'm just going to gently go over here and just click on this illuminative material i'm going to turn up the emissive then i'm going to increase the intensity then i'm going to change the color to red so it is going to be bright red then i'm going to hold shift and go back to it to you can see how realistic this component is actually from 3d max so you can you see how 3d max components are very compatible with d5 then i'm just going to select this one too as well i mean probably select this one here i think this is it once i select it i'm going to increase the intensity of the emissiveness increase it then i think this is good i think we have done a remarkable work click on this increase the movement speed so i think we have done a very remarkable work so again based on lighting i want to paste some nice chandelier light here which is very important so i also have a chandelier light that i've saved before so i'm just going to load it in i'm going to go to local all models then i'm just going to bring in my favorite chandelier light so i'm just going to place it somewhere here so once i've placed it i'm just going to close this library and i'm going to drag it down so now i've done this i'm now going to adjust the position and just bring it down to it's up to somewhere here then i'm going to change this size to about um okay i think this size should be enough or well, let me just increase the size to 1.5 
so now the size is bigger i'm just going to drag it down and till the chain comes out then i'm just going to try and centralize it so i'm going to go back to this view and i'm going to see how it looks so i'm just going to bring it forward a bit so as you can see you can see how built up this view is you can see how built up the environment is and it's looking very nice so we can still add some more cars like we can add some land cruiser as a drop off you can add a lot of things just to make this view very nice so i'm just going to go to assets again i'm going to go under my local vehicles then i'm just going to drop this land cruiser yeah, so this is the luxury duplex i want to depict wealth so i'm going to be adding some luxurious cars just all around so just to make the scene look very nice so i'm going to be rotating this and i'm going to be going back to this view here all right so now this is looking good we're going to hit ctrl s to save this project all right so now we are going to be placing some entourage so we're going to be placing some humans some beds just to lighten up the scene so now we're just going to click on P to exit this two-point perspective setting. Then we're just going to place some human beings in the balcony. Let's go to assets. Then we're going to go to online. Then we're going to go under character, the character category in the model library of D5. So I think it's under character. So once we go under character, we're going to see humans, free humans. We can see the ones that require some pay. So let's just go with the free ones. So we're just going to go over to this one and we're going to maybe place one closer to the vehicle so now i just want to add some things especially in this green area here i feel it's too empty then i'm just going to add some go under nature now then i'm going to go under flowering tree under the flowering tree i'm just going to pick this iconic tree or i think this is still fine then i'm just going to okay let me just pick this colored one then i'm just going to place it so once I've placed this, I'm just going to click on this, close this, then I'm going to reduce the size. I'm going to change the size to, let's say 1.5, 1,500, or let me use 1, 2,100. Then I'm just going to hold shift and place this at another corner, place this here. So now that I've done this, it's still adding more color to this scene. Then I'm going to click on this, I'm going to hold shift. Then once I've copied this, I'm just going to try and place this on this head, this d5 um, 3dx mass head here hold shift again and copy this and duplicate this so i think this has given this more a more realistic touch so now we've done this we're going to add some beds to add some beds we'll simply go under this add particles so under this add particles we're just going to go to animal clusters and we're just going to click on beds then we're just going to try and place them as high as possible so once we've placed them here we're now going to adjust their position put it up and adjust it just bring it high then just bring it so i'm going to, going to hold shift to zoom out i'm going to click on close then i'm going to hold shift here and just bring the beds closer so i could go to t to access the top view so i'm just going to get a better grasp of where they are then hit p then just drag the beds up and place them somewhere here so i think this is all fine and good so now we're done with this i think we are now ready to go to the render settings now so now we are at the final stages of the steel renders and we want to get some render settings. let me just click on these beds these beds are not high enough so now i'm just going to adjust this woman more let me just adjust that to a more favorable position so now we are going to enter the render settings and we're going to render this scene now so this scene we have worked a lot of it so we are now going to enter another aspect which is rendering settings so in rendering settings it is always good to keep a daylight view and a night line view so what i usually do i usually used to just click plus so i'm just going to add another scene so now i'm just going to drag this scene here and i'm going to bring it close to this scene one let me just bring it here bring it here zoom up and bring it under this scene one so it's still scene six but it's just directly under because it's the same scene but i want to use different render effect so the first render effect i'm going to be working on is on this scene one and i'm going to work on the daylight effect so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to off this my lighting layer so i'm going to turn off all the lights we've worked on so after doing that i'm going to go under environment i'm going to go i don't usually like using geo sky but you could use geo sky to get what you want but i usually like using hdris so under this hdris you could use some can bring in some new hdris you could just click on this drop down icon if you want to bring your own custom hdri maybe you use for 3d max you can just bring it in but me i i'm going to use a d5 default hdris so i'm going to be using this partly on so after i have done this i'm 
just first going to click on update to update it i'm not done with the setting there's still a lot of work to be done but once i update it i'm just going to click on this because i noticed one error this cutting is actually coming out so i'm just going to push it back in to just adjust it so now i'm going to go back to this our daylight view so now this our daylight view is the way it is now i'm now going to go under effect first then i'm going to turn off this Expo auto exposure what this auto exposure does is that d5 helps you control the lights at every point but it's kind of limiting because d5 does what they want and in rendering you want to be in control so i'm now going to drop this exposure at least significantly to a high extent to about this point then i'm going to increase this highlight local exposure i'm going to increase this contrast to about 0 0.3 or 0 0.2 i'm going to reduce the highlight to about 0 0.15 or 0 0.1 then the shadow is okay i'm going to increase the warmth of the image to about 6300 kelvins then i'm going to increase the tint to about 0.6 six or 0 0.7 after i've done with that i'm going to reduce the bloom to zero because i don't need any bloom i'm going to increase the vignette after doing this i'm going to go back to environment which i'm going to do a lot of work i'm going to turn on this sun once i've turned on this sun i'm going to reduce the intensity to about 0 0.6 after that i'm going to click on this icon here to expand this environmental effect i'm going to reduce the background light and i'm going to reduce the skylight to about 0 0.3 0 0.3 respectively or 0 0.4 or 0 0.4 respectively then i'm going to start rotating to get my desired view so i want a view where i want a lot of shadow play interplay shadow interplay between the light and the building so i'm just going to like where shadows will cast on the building as well as cast on the site so let me just rotate this i'm going i could still adjust some trees to just achieve this but let me just go and rotate this on my own so once I've done some rotation to something like this, I'm just going to click on update. So you are going to see this and you're going to see how it's looking on site. So now you can see the interplay of shadow on the ground. You can see a lot of effect, which is really cool and all. So now we have done this. We could now go here and make the song cooler if we want to make it look a bit cooler. We could adjust more settings then we could add the wind settings to just turn on the wind although we don't need it for still renders but still it just looks cool anyway so i'm going to go back to this effect under this effect i'm going to be trying i'm increasing this bloom so once i increase this bloom i'm going to increase it to about 0 0.2 so this light still light bulb to flare a bit then i'm going to click on i now i'm going to select this and i'm going to reduce the specularness so it's not going to reflect too much then i'm just going to update this so now after i've set this now i'm now going to go click on p to exit this perspective then i'm now going to go and turn off these led lights this led lights because i don't want the led lights to be on in a daylight view i want it to be on in the ambient view so once i zoom in close and i just click on it i'm just going to click on turn off and it's going to turn off so now i'm going to go back to this view and i'm going to see what it yields so as you can see you can see how good this is let me just click on l so i'm going to click on escape so you can see how good the scenery is then we can now decide whether we need more some more things to add to this scenery but overall i think it's actually looking very nice so i'm going to click on p to exit this setting then i'm going to see if i can adjust any shadow just to cast some nice effects so i'm just going to click on this building on this tree here then i'm just going to try and adjust it to cast some shadows on the building which I think it may have done already. Honestly, I just think it's enough. So now I'm just going to click on this and I'm just going to view this the way it is. So now I think we are set to render. So now what I'm going to do, let me just go back to this effect again and just tweak some of these things one or two more times. So I'm going to click on escape, go to back to environment, then just reduce this, reduce the background a bit, the background color and go back to effect now and then see if we could um adjust one or two make it cooler then i think this is fine i think i think we're there now so now we're just going to update this scene once we have updated it we're just going to click on this image here then before you render you are now going to you can click to on channels if then i'm just going to click on this and change it to 3.5k so the image will be of high quality okay before i render i'm going to exit this render interface let me just save the project first so our progress won't go then i'm going to click on this then i'm going to check this and change it back to 35 again then i'm just going to click render and i'm going to locate where i want to render it on my file explorer then i'm just going to call this luxury render one 
then i'm just going to click on save all right so now we are done with the daytime renders we're going to quickly set up the ambient renders so or rather evening renders so i'm just going to this scene too and i'm going to start illuminating some materials like the led lights and the car headlamps so i'm going to click on p to exit two point perspective setting then i'm going to zoom into one of these led lights i'm just going to slow down the speed and just zoom into it then i'm going to click on i on my keyboard select the material so once I selected the material, I'm going to go over to this um, Spectre tab and I'm going to just click on this Turn On Emissive. So now I'm going to click on this glass to confirm that it's totally transparent. Reduce this refraction to zero and leave the transparent at maximum. Reduce the specularness so very clear and visible. So after I've done with, I'm done with the LED light, I'm going to quickly go to the car headlamps and I'm going to turn on the illuminative um, characteristic. So I'm just going to go and reduce the speed of this navigation then I'm just going to zoom in slowly and I'm just going to check it and I'm just going to click on this turn on emissive. Then I'm going to set the value at 50. So now I've turned on this emissive settings. I'm going to go back to this in six. Then I'm going to start tweaking the environment. So now I'm going to go back to effect and as usual, I'm going to turn off this auto exposure. So I'm going to have control over the exposure. I'm going to go to environment. I'm going to switch it to HDRI. So if you are working in ambient views and you are using D5 default HDRIs, I'll suggest you use between this early morning and evening and this sunset. This sunset is another very nice HDRI. But let's just use early morning okay so now we've selected early morning i'm just going to click on this tab here and i'm just going to reduce the skylight a bit then reduce the background to about 0.12 note that these settings are still subject to a lot of change then i'm going to increase the color temperature towards the cooler side then i'm going to go to this effect and i'm going to reduce the exposure to when i feel it's just right so i think this 0.22 is just about right i could go a bit further 0.23 i think that is enough then i'm just going to increase this highlight local exposure i'm going to go and touch the contrast a bit the highlight i'm going to leave the highlight where it is i think it's fine then i'm just going to leave the white balance at this i think the temperature is okay i could even increase the temperature a bit because i don't want it to be too blue then i'm um, okay let me just reduce it to about 6.6 .6 or 6.5 then I'm going to increase the tint to about 0.07. Then I'm going to increase this bloom to about 0.39 or 0.4. I'm going to go and increase this vignette a bit. Then I'm going to just increase the saturation. I think we are done with the effect um, part. So now we are just going to go to environment. Now under this environment, we are going to start rotating this HDRI. So I want an effect that one side of this image will be the brighter side. So it will be like the brighter. So even though there is no sun here, it will just show one brighter effect on one side. So I'm just going to leave it at this. So this side will be whiter. And I've noticed something with the camera shot. I'm just going to try and lower the camera shot just a bit by clicking E on my keyboard just to lower it. Then I'm just going to turn it this way then i think this is fine then i'm just going to go over here and make sure i update this in so once i update it i'm just going to click on this building i feel i should drag this building down a bit then i think we are good to render so now i'm just going to go over here i'm going to click on image then i'm going to click on this change this property so i'm going to increase the size of the render to 3.5k then I'm just going to click on render and I'm going to save it where I want to save it in my file explorer. So once I've located where I want to save it, I'm just going to give it a name render one C. Then I'm just going to click on save and it's going to render as a PNG file. So now we are done with rendering these images. Now we are going to be working on them in Photoshop. You get? So we are just going to try and open Photoshop. Any Photoshop at least from 2020 could do the job. So what I'm using is Photoshop 24. So I'm just going to open it and start editing this image. So post-production is basically what you didn't get in rendering. You are going to use post-production to fine tune it. So now you can see our Photoshop interface. So what I'm just simply going to do is I'm going to open this folder i'm just going to minimize it a bit then i'm just going to drag in these daylight images so i'm going to drag this daylight image and start editing it so currently this image is looking good but we just want to fine tune it and reduce some things i feel are not necessary so i'm going to go under filter i'm going to go to camera raw filters then once i go to camera raw filters i'm just going to be editing this dialogue will come up so now i'm going to start from the basics so i'm going to click on lighten i'm going to reduce the exposure a bit 
I'm going to the contrast. I'm going to leave the contrast the way it is. The highlights, I'm just going to touch it down a bit. Um, the white and black, I'm going to reduce the black a bit just to get more um, denser shadows. So I'm just going to reduce this highlight more because I want it to be dampened down. Then I'm going to go to colors. Under colors, I'm I could work on the temperature. Let me just drop this temperature towards a um, cooler temperature. Let me just drop it minus two. Um, I'm going to go to tint, increase the tint a bit, plus three. Then go to effect. Under this effect, I can now increase the texture. This is one important setting. I'm going to increase the texture to like plus 19. I'm going to increase the clarity. Then I could increase the vignette too, just a little bit. So now you can see it to start coming out well so now no, i'm just going to go to detail i don't need all these color mixers so i'm just going to increase the sharpen to about 40 something then increase the noise reduction a bit then once this is done if i click on this icon here you are going to see the past one which you can see how shad is looking but this one is looking much more refined and sharper then i'm just going to click on ok once this is done i'm going to hit ctrl s to save the image then i could just close this so now we are going to enter animation in d5 render so i'm just going to close this and go back to d5 okay so now i could just click on close then i could just switch this to animation interface so now an animation interface is kind of clicking on this animation icon yeah this icon that looks like a recording camera then let's just increase the speed of our movement so first thing to do if you open the animation interface you are going to see a lot of inter um, dialogues here yeah? we are going to see some icons so what we are going to be working with are these clips now so we are currently in clip one okay so the way animation works is you are going to snap a starting point and snap an ending point so once you snap those two points it will now form an animation clip for instance i'm just going to start snap an animation clip by let's say i'm going to click on this then i'm just going to move in here and click on new clip so now if i click on play now i'm going to see the animation will actually play so now i'm going to change the i can now edit the time interval between these two clips i could change it to five to by and by increasing the time interval and not and still maintaining the same distance is going to re reduce the speed of the camera so as you can see now you can see how it's moving okay so now the same way images that you can add environmental settings you can do that for animation so for instance if i go to effects now and i turn on this wind settings and i increase the strength to maximum i update this scene yeah? make sure you update it once you've done this go over here go to wind again increase the strength again and update this scene so once i play this you are going to see that the wind effect is going to be playing is going to affect so now this is just how to create a simple animation so you can create different type of animation we can even go to this daylight scene now and we can still go and click on plus to create another clip so let's create this clip too now so under this clip too we are just going to zoom out a bit and we're going to turn on f8 to turn on the two point perspective setting so we're going to try and get a genuine perspective so it won't be looking distorted so i'm just going to increase the camera height let me just reduce the camera speed because of this and just go down a bit okay so let's say somewhere from here or let me just use the two point perspective setting since it will be kind of difficult so let's say i want to take a shot from here then i'm going to click on add a new scene then i'm just going to go in um, maybe let me hold shift and just create another scene so i'm going to put the distance the um, time interval between these two scenes as five seconds then i'm just going to play it so that is how to create a simple animation and you can see that we, are, we have already set wind effect and if you go back to clip one we're going to still see the animation clip we've created okay so now i'm going to go back to this clip too and i'm going to show you how to animate object so to do that we're going to go back to video to click off the animation interface then we are simply going to go to asset library and we're going to look for go under model and we're going to look for a human being model that is working so we can just click on search and type working so we're going to see the models that are in motion so let me just click on working and i'm going to click enter all right so now we are going to see some characters that are working so i'm just going to click on this dude over here and i'm just going to place the model here so once i've done this i'm going to close this i'm going to go back to the animation interface and i'm just going to animate this man walking now so i'm just going to click on it and this same principle not only works for human beings it only also works for uh, vehicles too so if you place a vehicle and do the same thing it's going to animate so firstly i'm going to click here to create a new keyframe a keyframe is actually a point in time of where an object to be in a certain position so it means that at this point in the timeline here you are going to see this blue thing will highlight here this guy will be at this position then if i move the timeline to the end and i now 
okay this is not the end let me move it to the end and now adjust the position of this guy and adjust it to maybe here and then i'll click on another keyframe and also make sure this rate matching is on then if i play the animation you are going to see the guy will animate so as you can see this is just how to use animation so another thing we are going to do is i'm going to show you how to do mass movement in animation so i'm going to go back to this our first clip that is showing the access route so as you can see this is an access route but there is nothing really there so let's just try and animate put some mass animations instead of animating cars so to do mass animations is very simple in d5 you are just going to click on this part two under this part two you are going to click on and vehicle so now we are going to click on this uh, camera navigation interface and increase the speed so we can have free and dynamic movement okay so now we have done this we are now going to select the cars we want i'm going to be selecting almost all our free cars so i'm just going to once i've selected them i'm now going to move the cars from this point now i'm going to move them from this point play, click on this part to um, place it let me hit shift to zoom in fast and just place it here so once i've done this you are going to see a lot of cars will be moving if i click on escape if i click on this this will now be a single editable component so now i could now reduce the density if i want i could change it from single lane to three lane i could change it to one lane because i want it to be one lane then i could even also adjust the direction i could change it to direction b but i want it to be in direction this direction b uh -huh. so i could not also change the speed i could change the speed to 35 degree 35 kilometer per hour so just to slow it down so the same thing i'm going to click on part again vehicles then i'm going to select all the vehicles again and draw the second part you could even make some complex parts so let's say for instance we want to draw to this point now we can still go and just place it to actually follow this curve we can just place it place point here then make another part to this point then once this is done i'm going to click on this and i'm going to change it to one single lane and i'm just going to reduce the speed and reduce the density a bit then if i go back to this our scene now if i go back to this first scene i'm now going to play it so as you can see you can see how the animation went okay so all fine and good but still before we round up we're just going to go back and we're going to touch a bit of things in this scene first of all we're going to select this car part here once we have selected the car part we're going to turn on the lights click on it and we're going to turn on the headlamps of the car so i think this we're just going to click on light here we're going to click on this second one too and turn on the lights here so all the cars in this mass movement so we're going to play some street lights because we haven't played some actual street lights so i'm going to be bringing one for my own asset library let me just delete this i'm going to go to assets i'm going to go to local and i'm going to go to model so i'm going to be bringing my own custom street lights i use for this kind of things all right so i think i've seen the street light so i'm just going to click on it and i'm going to place it here so let me just adjust the height so now once i click on this i'm going to click on this drop down icon select these two spotlights i'm going to increase the temperature then i'm going to increase the attenuation radius and change their layer to lighting layer then once i'm done with this i'm not going to click off then i'm going to click this as a single group then i'm going to hold shift and just copy this so now we have finished this animation now we could still edit the effect of the animation environment you could go to environment here or effect and we could just simply increase the exposure to 0.26 if we want or 0.28 we are just going to update it the same for this we are going to change it in animation make sure you change the two points or the multiple points here editing 0.26 okay then we're just going to click on update so now you can see how this works and it still is looking um, pretty nice so let's look at this clip we did and okay i noticed something so in animation um, clips you could actually select the position of objects where you want them to be so i'm just going to click on this and create a new frame then i'm just going to move it back so as you can see um the human being is no more interfering with this car so if you turn off this animation interface you are going to see this car now return back to its original position so all the movements you are doing is just pertaining to this animation clip okay so now i think we are pretty much done here yeah? we have animated i've showed you at least all the basics in animation so now if you click on this clip one we are now going to you can change the resolution side i usually prefer using 2k because 2k is the balance between quality and speed 
at least in a powerful system of course then if i click on this clip too i'm going to click on okay it's already set in 2k so you could render animation the normal way you could just simply click on render or you could render in batches especially when you are having a lot of animation clips for instance i'm going to render in batch by clicking on here you are going to see that the normal way you render uh, your file explorer will open so you can locate where you want to place the file but we don't want to use that i will show you how to render in batch so once i've clicked on this clip i'm just going to click on this add to render queue here i'm going to click on clip 2 add to render queue then i'm now going to go over here and click on this render queue now so now i'm just going to click on all and select these two clips then i'm just going to click on this location where i want them to be located so now i'm just going to call this rename light click and call this create a new folder call this animation and i'm just going to place it inside this animation clips then i'm going to select folder and i'm going to click on okay i don't need to click on auto you can click on auto close d5 after rendering and finish which is fine but i'm just going to click on render so it's going to save your project for you and it's going to start rendering the animation clips all right so now the renders are done we're just going to try and get where the render animation clips are all right so now we are just going to check out the clips you just did all right so this is the first clip and this is the second clip so as you can see you can see how good these animations are looking so you can see what d5 can do all right so i think this brings us to the end of this video i think we have covered everything pretty much the animation and render interface of d5 render so if this video was helpful um don't forget to reward us by hitting the like button subscribe to our channel for more content like this don't forget to hit the notification bell to get notified once we release new videos like this because we're going to be doing more of this okay without out of the way i'm going to wish you good luck until the next video